Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, for the second time, whatever the hell else we come up with this week, Valve slaps a price on the Areola controller, and it's actually reasonable. Outland rumbles its way onto Linux, but the system requirements, they're a bit confusing. And Wings of St. Nazari is still busy showing millennial hipster developers how retro is fuck all mothering done. Bioshock Infinite is out on Linux, and what the actual fuck is this? Spec Ox, the line, gets some Linux support rumblings. And I'm not holding my breath on that one. And XNA is dead! Long live Mono Game! Valve changes the Steam and user license agreement, but only to find a comfortable new loophole. Carmageddon Reincarnation will be out this year, but not for Linux. And Michael Speth updates Keyboarding Master. Now you too can have a GUI for managing custom keybinds. I'm Vin Stone, all the way at LGC Actual, and joined every week by Masses Fang up at Canadian Land. What's up, mm, baby? My nipples are like pencil erasers. They are. And from Space Portugal. You know, there is absolutely them. nothing special about my nipples. It's brilliant. I'm and sorry. And joining us <laughs> live, Shat Realm Dynamic, where we get together and for a bit of a cocaine Voltron. It's awesome. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs. What is it, J-Man? Oh, man, we're kicking my ass this week. Multiple 12-hour days, and I had to work, like, half of Saturday. So, basically, all my prep work for this show was done a bit in the span of about four hours, besides my Bioshock Infinite rant. <laughs> <laughs> And for me, well, I didn't really have much free time outside of being at the office, because at the office was actually a decent enough week. The server is running okay. The guy that works for us, but isn't always at the office that needs to access and it remotely, de-dust. managed to do so without any issues. So I spent the whole week just sitting back at the office, but I work not so much at home. That's Over here in Vinland, I did pick up one of these cute little things. It's the uh, Hyper 212 Evo Cooler Master Yellow Swaggy Peen Extender thing of um, I'm going to have to be extremely bored one day before I pull the render box out and install that back plate and all that other nonsense. How, how, how much dust do you figure is actually in that box? You right know, now? I don't even want to imagine how bad that is. <laughs> actually, it's, it's reasonably clean. Every time I open it, though, I have a fun experience. It's like, oh yeah, I bought Yolo RAM because it's got the coolers and shit on it. It's always amazeballs. But another thing that did take place is uh, we're on the Stitchers. I don't know what the hell it is, but Woo! we're on it. A couple of you have asked, more than one. It's like, ah, I listen to the Stitchers on my mobiles, and that's how I get my podcast. For, 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 for Linux Game Cast, two weekly. It's awesome, man. <laughs> you gotta love it. Two weekly. So head over there if that is your bag, baby. But um, what's a horse up to this week? Wait, wait, it's wait. wait. Don't we have a just, bit of a PSA? No, don't we? we oh, yes. Oh, right, 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 right. Next week, we are having an early show as per our Patreon goal. Uh, so we yes. will be starting 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which means we'll usually kick off the live stream at about 6, you figure? Yeah, somewhere around in there. So, yeah. All right. So people in the UK, adjust your schedules, Google calendars, whatever. But as for the horse, just like Sko, it's back from the dead! It's our Steam Linux Update of the Week! Oh, oh yes, God. rub them. Rub them oh, very yes. hard. <laughs> okay, Steam Controller. <laughs> Technical difficulties are already starting. This is going to be a fun show. Um... Check out the price on Brad here. The Areola controller is out. Experience a new level of precise controls for your favorite games. Uh, you know it, you love it, you've seen it, and man, has it changed over the uh, radical the hell's my meat touch sauce right. touch concept. <laughs> and it's kind of boiled down to two touchy pads. you got your four buttons, you got your play and all that, Steam button, and your little uh, D-pad business going on right here. But forty nine ninety nine. dollars uh, J-Man, you were saying that seemed kind of reasonable. That, that, that is incredibly reasonable, considering my roommate picked up an extra PS4 controller so that we could multiplayer Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and that was 65 bucks! So, yeah. I, I, I don't know, though. Given the amount of crap they're shoving in there with the multiple touchpads and the HD haptics, whatever the hell that is, 
that fifty dollar price point means that either Valve is eating up a lot of uh, a lot of the costs, or the build qualities may not be that great. But once again, I can't I can't I have to reserve judgment until I actually get the damn thing in my hand. So I've probably been gonna pick up two for testing purposes. Um I'm yeah. kind of like all right, definitely we're gonna have to pick up one for the show no matter what, but I'm kind of thinking by that time I'll have the uh grifter. So uh it's gonna be a tough sell, B man. I'm far more concerned to the shipping costs when, you know, November hits and I want to order one to Portugal. <laughs> I, you know, what's that going to cost me shipping wise? Because yeah, I don't mind paying 50 euros for a controller. I don't, but I don't want to pay another 50 in shipping. Mm. Well, it's, it, it's going to be out November 15th. So you're going to have to sit on your thumbs until that date or not November 15th, just November, 2015, but coming up next. Ah, oh, full uh, disclosure. Ching, ching. <laughs> yep, that's the whole thing. This comes from that's, PC whoa, Gamer. That's, you whoa, can find this Pedro, that's horribly racist. I know, that's terribly <laughs> racist. All Steam users must now disclose paid recommendations. You're looking at this and like, what does this mean for me? Chances are nothing. Um, my biggest thing is how, how are they going to enforce this? And let me tell you what they're going to try to enforce. All right, here's the dice. Check with the judge. If you get any wet, stinky, you know, money kickback, free keys, or anything like that, you have to tell your audience, Oregon, Period. And it kind of seems like Valve is doing this because they're expecting the actual streaming system in Valve to kind of take off like Twitch and they want to cover their arse organs with that to make uh, sure uh, people aren't kicking money uh, over there and people are streaming and all that uh, business. So it, it also kind of makes sense given that, you know, Valve wants their cut. So if you're if you're going to sidestep them, at least prove that you're uh, you're being an advertiser for some game company. Yeah, and every now and again, you'll see, usually with YouTube or even streamers on Twitch, that they advertise certain stores like G2A.com that get their game keys from less than licit places, so... Don't you mean you illicit know, places? Less than licit was what I said. Less than licit? <laughs> I, I, yes. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a word. Well, it is now. <laughs> but yeah, this is just Valve covering their asses in the legal terms as much as they can. And if they want, you know, broadcasting or streaming or whatever they call it to compete with Twitch, they kind of have to. But speaking and of speaking, terms of service. Yes. Well, the legality of the Steam Store has been in question over the past couple of years in the European Union especially regarding the fact that they do not offer a viable way of refunding. Say you buy a game, it turns out to be shit. You are not guaranteed to get a refund. Uh, so people, you, I think it was Germany and a couple of other countries that actually went to court with this, that they sued them, <laughs> and they were like, okay, we'll change it. So now that they have, their change involves just presenting people in the EU with a teeny tiny little box whenever they buy a game with a tick box that says, I agree to the terms of the Steam subscriber agreement. By clicking purchase, you agree that Valve provides you with immediate access to digital content as soon as you complete your purchase. And this sort of fits into the loophole in EU law, which says that when it comes to digital goods, as long as the storefront or whatever you're buying the game or music or even a movie from as long as they provide you with the service that you're paying for you don't get a refund you're not entitled to the 14 day refund period so to speak so yeah valve's just saying you click purchase we have done our duty we you cannot ask us for a refund sorry so yeah people in the eu still do not get refunds Welcome to the real Yay. world, Neo. But I spy what? Spec Ops! Ooh. All right. So, uh, th so this game actually was incredibly lauded back in the day. I recall Yahtzee actually referring to this as, like, the best shooter of its year. So, or best shooter of 2012. So my interest has peaked. And here's the thing, though. It's... What? It's a 2K game. And they've had a good history of native ports on Linux... Well, you know, up until, until recently, this week. but we'll get into that in a bit. I don't know if 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 the port is good and it, it's legitimate, 
I'm I'm actually looking forward to this because I heard this was a really good game and it has an awesome story that really really tries to have gravitas and be a legitimate yeah, storytelling yeah. experience. So I don't know. I'm looking at this and I was reading that one quote in the description designed to challenge players' morality. Well, uh, not was... not your not your morality <laughs> then, obviously, because there's not enough there's not enough airwolf or mayonnaise in there to even you know, graze that barrier for you. <laughs> so, P-Man, do you want to play Shoot Brown People Simulator? Yeah, that's the thing. There is a teeny tiny caveat on this game, and it's not even about what we're going to discuss next, is that this game is not what it seems on the first look, and I'm just going to sit back and let it hit and watch people get pissed off on the Steam forums and everywhere else on the internet. So, and of course, I have been sure it will hit. I am assuming it'll hit because so far all we have is the Linux depots on the Steam database. And without any official confirmation, this is about as non newsy as it gets. So I'm just yeah. going to wait. Oh, wow. True enough. True enough. But it's what we were talking here. about. It's a <laughs> yes. real boy. Well, not really. It's, it's just virtual. So Yo, Bioshock Infinite. Bitch. The uh, the sequel to Bioshocks 1 and 2, not available on Linux. This one is now available on Linux, but it comes with a big butt, as in, oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Jesus Christ. This is... <laughs> no, this, this is an Eon port. Much, much, like, much like The Witcher 2, this is not an actual native port. They've used their Eon wrapper to dump the Windows executables in there, and allow it to run under Linux. And by accident, I, I had clicked on the Gaming on Linux article for this, and I came across this terrifying comment. And they say, if they perfect their wrapper, I think they might soon be the leading company to port games to Linux. If it's lazy, if it's a lazy and quick solution that does the job, even big companies would be happy with it. And that that is quite honestly horrifying. Because here's the thing, you can you can you can say that you don't care that it's not an import as long as it runs well. But this actually does harm Linux and Linux gaming. It allow it allows companies to continue to treat Linux as a sideline OS. It allows you it allows them to treat CMOS as a second class citizen. Uh, it'll in artificially increase the system requirements of games just because there's additional abstraction layers. Twofold in place. for this one. What? It's twofold system requirements. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, what, what do you call it? The the Windows system requirements are much, much, much lower than the Linux system requirements on this. But this is not the ch ultimately. This is not the change we wanted. This is, uh, this is just people throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And the saddest thing of all, really, is that no matter how much we speak out against it, no matter how much we say that. We want native ports. We want people to actually write native OpenGL code. We want engines ported and so on. The community has spoken, and they have said that they don't care anymore. That they are just happy that they want games on Linux. And ultimately, I think, if anything, that will be our ultimate death knell. But what really, really pisses me off about this entire scenario is that Aspire actually ported, the, or did the Mac port. So 40% of the work easily done by a company that puts out high-quality native Linux ports. And 2K goes, nah, bro, we're going with this Eon wrapper shit. I don't know. I got, I got a bit of an unpopular theory with that because you, I, I just can't imagine. I, I have to imagine that this port is what you get when you go with the lowest bidder because there's no way I, I can see virtual programming charging the same thing as Feral or Aspire, the guys who do awesome native ports. I'm like, yeah, we'll yeah. do it on the cheap in 2K. It's like, all right, here, go do it because we don't know about the backlash of Witcher 2. And they're like, good, we covered that up really well. Um, I just don't <sighs> see that thing. And you got to think, even Aspire, you know, they managed, if you look on the page down here, just a bit, and it was like, warning at the very bottom, and it was like, you know, message drivers and the Intel graphics are not currently supported. Well, it is on Mac because Aspire knows a fucking all they're doing, and they sorted that business, but not on this. To be fair, to be fair, it is not the busted train wreck that was Witcher 2 that a year later was still not playable on a lot of platforms. But yep. we are seeing a lot of black screens, that's racist, frozen for fuck all reason in random scenarios. Crashes, instability, and that is ultimately what and you get And then somebody wrapper. wrote, but 
uh, my controller doesn't work, and I just bust out laughing. I was like, you have no idea. That's not going to happen, son. Be mad. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. About the, the Mesa things, Feral actually ported XCOM Enemy Unknown, which is also an Unreal Engine 3 game, and that Cause, works Because, you know, you can't, you can't port those games without moon technology, right? Oh, yeah, totally. And that works un, just un, fine Unreal with the open no source support whatsoever. Be it Intel or you have, if you have a Radeon card from AMD, that shit will work. But no, let's just go with the virtual programming wrapper thing. Now, I can sort of find yet another possibility as to why they decided to go with that instead of a native port. And I'm going to say it's probably because DirectX 11 compatibility would sort of force the development team to port the game to OpenGL 4.4 or 4.5. Now, there aren't a whole lot of people out there who can actually do that. Most of them have been working with OpenGL 3 and maybe virtual programming did, oh yeah, we kind of figured out DirectX how to do DirectX on Linux just use our wrapper so maybe that's why maybe it's what ben said they were the cheapest price maybe it's both i don't know but i don't like it what it means to I me mean, though at the end of the day because i own the game it was in some bundle or something it means to me brad i never get to play bioshock 2 because i said after the infinite. witcher 2 infinite <laughs> fuck you and <laughs> I can't play it because I said point blank. I'll never play a virtual programming port, period. Best case scenario, a year or two organ down the road, I'll be able to play it under wine. J-Man, any thoughts? Moral of, moral of the story, shame on you, 2K. You had a really, 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 really good thing going. Right. And then done fucked it up. You can no longer yeah. insta-buy 2K ports. You, nope. you really can't, and and that is, that is the saddest thing for me. If if uh, Saints Row the Fourth is an Eon port, I I will literally break down and cry. <laughs> but next, okay. in an Outland. Outland, what is it? You never heard of it? It's a fast-paced, dynamic platform. Uh, they meant bullet hell kind of platformer thingy. Uh, we use the power of light and dark. That's racist in an epic journey to save the world. Um, and what's we're the price? Right, nine point nine nine. We're gonna give this a full review. This just came out this week. Everybody seems to like it. We have our own take on it. So I'm kind of curious about the uh, requirements here. This does require the ever elusive operating system of <laughs> Kernel two point six three two. It's so recommended. So you can play it on sent. You can play it on your CentOS six servers. So, OS so six that's good. or a uh, three twelve OS, which is, that's definitely another good one. But we're not going to talk about uh, this too much no, because... At least, at least you don't need GLUBC for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be coming up but later no. in the show. It's a thing. But what is this, Nightmare Fuel? I got an email earlier in the week from Mr. Eric Johnson, the guy behind Tales of Majeal. And he's like, yeah, uh, we just released a new update. Here's the key if you guys want to talk about it. And I look at Steam. Oh, I have it. Van has it. Sandy has it. I think Jordan's the one that doesn't have it. So it was probably that, some sort of bundle it. that I didn't buy. <laughs> yeah. So it's a um, it's the usual top-down view, roguelike, turn-based combat thing, but it is very, very well done. If you like the roguelike genre at all, don't just need an operating system, Brad. Yeah, you don't you, even need it. Just run you, it on RAM. Just need RAM and an OpenGL <laughs> compatible video card. But yeah, he sent us an email because, oh yeah, we have a new update coming and there's a bunch of new stuff. There will be a link in the show notes for you to check everything out. This is the kind of patch that most companies would call DLC and charge 20 bucks for because there's a shit ton of new content. New classes. Sort of like FTL Advanced Edition? Kind of, yeah. It's new classes, new environment tile sets, new enemies. There's a bunch of new shit. If you like this game, if you already own it, give it another download. Play it again. I think you might it, enjoy the new stuff. It it it, it looks like uh, Vulture's Claw, to be perfectly honest. That's it it takes free. more than a little inspiration from Vulture's Claw, yes. <laughs> For me, right. I got as far as reading Tales of Magial is a roguelike RPG featuring tactical... <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> oh shit, I think Ven just no, had a stroke. It, it, Someone called the ambulance. YOLO. It is actually kind of awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Coming up next news. Gentlemen, as is tradition lately, now is not yet the news, but it is the Patreon update of the week. And this week, we have one more people who... Uh, <clears throat> one more one people. One more person. Mm. One more person. And who it's, has it, proven it's that. Pedro. <laughs> no, it's actually Pablo. He no, has it, kicked it, in... It, no, it, shut, shut up, Pablo. It's Pedro. <laughs> and he donated $2.50 to our noble cause. Which gets them in the Super Squad. It also gets some show note access. I know, that's awesome. You a podcast who game on Linux and do other stuff. Good, we got this business kicking on at 60.82 per Saturday night Ooh. train wreck. We love you guys. We already got this, but um, we got a couple of goals. We're getting there. We're getting there to that uh, 1 million mm -hmm. goal, which is going to be a bit of awesome sauce, but we haven't set all the details. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a secret, some things that's coming up as a stretch goal. Spoilers! Spoilers! Um... There's a guy who has done um, a Linux show for quite some time, and no, I'm going to talk to him. His name rhymes with Schmat Schmarley? It's Schmat Schmarley. Uh, <laughs> no, um, we were talking, we're like, hmm, we need another stretch goal. So I was like, hey, Matt Hartley, what's up, bro? He was like, oh, yeah, sure, let's do it, done. So we're just going to lock everything down, and we're going to be bringing Matt Hartley, formerly of the Linux Action Show, on... Made up, Max. <laughs> Hackintoshes. <laughs> and we're going to switch all our hardware over to Apple. And <laughs> yes. th that's definitely going to happen. Let's get yeah. into some news, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yeah. XNA is dead. Long, Long live XNA. XNA. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. So... Uh, if you did not know, if you developed games using a mono game, it does export to all other platforms like uh, Raspberry Pi, Linux, all that good stuff. That one handheld console thing that runs Linux on an ARMv4 chip. But you actually did need a Windows machine with XNA installed to compile your code, which sucks. But now it doesn't because you don't need it anymore. Monogame has completely divorced itself from XNA. You no longer need to have a Windows machine. All the builds can be done under Linux. I know. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. Does I'm, that I'm mean sorry. we finally get the Unity editor under Linux? Because oh, they hell use no. Monogame. <laughs> oh, hell, oh, hell no. But I, I, I'm sorry. There, there's something in my throat. I, th I think it might be Ethan <laughs> dick. I Excuse don't know, me. and I'm looking at this, you know, prior to 3.3, you actually did need a Windows box or a host somewhere to compile your business. This is completely gone, and like J-Man said, it re divorces it of that. It's 100% open source. So really, if you're using Mono Game now to build your current project, uh, the only reason you wouldn't release a Linux version is because, fuck you, that's why. P-Man, thoughts? Uh, yeah, no, no, it was just my thing about, again, Unity. They, they yeah. use mono game to do their Linux and their Mac ports of sorts. Yeah, so you, you, you saw my thing it, in the show notes. No, I didn't. Oh, but I do oh. now. Sorry about that. <laughs> you fucking plagiarist. Plagiarism strikes, strikes again. Strikes again. Plagiarism. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I'm sorry about that. I actually didn't see it. Uh, but yeah. I don't think there's a reason, unless because fuck you, that's why. But uh, that that should. that is the sole reason, Pedro. That is <laughs> yeah. <the sole> reason. <laughs> well, you Coming know, up the next. guys over at Unity definitely. Before we do that, uh, gotta do something because everybody else is going to fucking hate of Linux. Yeah, <laughs> but it's out. Yay! Well, it's, well, it's not sort of, kind of, not really. <laughs> Yeah, it will be coming out. It will be going gold. What is it? it? Going gold on April twenty third, twenty fifteen. What is it? Well, what's coming out? You completely glossed it's over Armageddon reincarnation. reincarnation. Yes, that game Thank that was kickstarted over what was it four years ago ish? Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Okay, so it's three three years ago. There was a little Kickstarter for a game in the Carmageddon series and. They got the funding. They got the funding for the Linux uh, port, which was a stretch goal of, I think it was a hundred thousand. Was bucks. their first stretch goal? Yeah, uh, and well, they said that the Linux version would be coming out after release, 
and it's coming it's technically going to be released if this video that they have released on youtube is to be well i mean know, i like that it's actually coming out but if you go back all the way i forgot to pull that up the original quote was we expect the shipping version to be done in 2013 so expect yes so, um, <laughs> years later then they got additional funding you remember they did the kickstarter and we're like okay we're good first thing i ever backed on the kickstarter i think p-man same thing yep and we're like okay next year well, this is 2012 2013 at the end of 2013 they're going to start on that i'm like awesome we're good what happened brad is they got some additional funding you know, from outside, and they're like, okay, brilliant. The first thing we're going to do with that is create an Android and iOS ports that nobody fucking asked for. Yep. We're really focused on that instead of focusing on getting the damn game done. They, uh, they did release some lovely concept art, though. I know, and prizes. Uh, and I was like, I don't, don't really care about that. <laughs> and here's something that T-Man's also on is it looks dated. Very much so. Very much so. Again, none of the Carmageddon games were actually the peak of audiovisual acuity even back in the day. And I, I think the most grievous example of that was Carmageddon TDR 2000, which looked ah, old even back in 2003. It looked really old, but this one manages to look even worse. What the hell? I don't know. I, I remember playing this on DOS and Network and all that. And I remember even talking to the developers back then. Like, can we ever get some interweb support, you know, on our 56K X2 YOLO extreme modems? Like, no packet size. No, it's too big. And that's great. Don't care about that. But I did do some research and just reading through their forums that we have access to being backers. On Windows, the only thing they have this running it is abysmal performance, even on 980s, on Windows, running the latest YOLO sauce. It's horrible. And if you watch that trailer, which will be linked in the show notes, even on their own trailer, their release trailer, you can see slowdown in this trailer. Yep. <laughs> and that's a thing. That, that, that's a marker of quality. Looking that's... forward to it. Got my hopes down. Okay. Get ready to humble, but... baby. Oh, Are we God. not ready to humble? I, th I think I go need to shit blood. No, this is the humble <laughs> PC and Android bundle 12. So all these games are available on PC and on your Android phones if you have these things that I'm holding up. Ooh, that you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. No, um, the games available are uh, Tetro Bot and Co. Titan Attacks, Inner World, v -v 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 That's Cetera hipster. Returns, Costume Quests, and Iron Clan Tactics. Or ironclad tactics. You probably own a lot of these games already due to hum previous humble bundles. So I'm, um, but they they always do add more crap. I'd I'd hold off until they release the full list of games. But it doesn't really look all that impressive, to be honest. All these games do have native Linux versions, though, unlike some from previous bundles. Bioshock. Um, excuse me, <laughs> but. Hey, uh, you can one also thing play them that on your we phone. do see here is um, Linux debut, The Inner World. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's there. Definitely with you. Um, by time of release, you will have eight days and some odd minutes for this. P-Man, you picking it up? Uh, no, The Inner World is literally the only game so far on that list that I do not yet own. So, no. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> right. So let's talk yeah. about Keyboard Master. The keyboarding master. Yeah, it's Michael's pet. If you don't know him, he usually hangs around the Google Plus community for Linux gaming. Uh, yeah, he created a GUI of sorts to sort your key maps for the custom buttons that come in your YOLO swag gamer keyboards, like from Razer, Logitech, Rocat, and all that. There's a, He released a new version, 0.4, a couple of days ago, and it introduces support for the Razer something. There's the one of the Widow. new Razer keyboards, and also it introduces the um, uh, Amazon affiliate links. If you'd like to support him on his thing, you can do that now. But yeah, so you should it, totally click on our Amazon affiliate links, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you totally should. <clears throat> but yeah. It, if you want a GUI to help you sort out those magical buttons that don't work on your keyboard unless you install that Windows bloatware that they usually come with, now you can do that. It's 
from what I've hear, uh, from what I've heard, I've, I think people have been saying good things about it. I don't actually have a keyboard that has the, all those YOLO swag macro buttons, so I can't exactly test it. But if you do, give this one a shot. There'll be a link in the show notes. Good stuff. I, I, actually, I I got a YOLO keyboard. I should give that a shot. Sweet. Yeah. Mm. The macro keys work. But you look, you sound a bit naive. Naive, naive. No, Z point six Z release. It's out. Um, what is it? You never heard of it? It's a two D space trading and combat game taking inspiration from Escape Velocity series, among others. And I just got a bit of advice for Brad. You really have to search around on this site, Oregon, to figure out what the fuck all is this game about. Um. Here it is. Get a bit of media. Uh, J-Man, you know more about it than me. Yeah, I, I played it for about 15 minutes. Uh, ba- so, well, let, 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 let's let's have a little story. They they do mention that they have full improved STL2 support. That always brings a smile to my face. But if you want to play this game, you have to download the executable. And then you have to download the game files. And then you have to copy the executable to a folder with the game files, or else you'll get this nasty little error up at front saying, you need to download the end data files and drag them and drop them onto this little window. I'm like, what? No, <laughs> let's, let's not do that. I, I don't understand why you can't just package your game and your game assets, or even create like overlapping archive files so that it extracts the executable into a folder, and then it extracts the game data into that same folder. Simple stuff. It makes sense. Does it not? Maybe I'm crazy. Who knows? But that's one of the things they said is they have improved keyboard mouse gameplay, uh, optional WAS layout. How do they do this with Moon technology? Oh, no, the, 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 it's a CL2, man. The, the, the WAS support is there. Uh, It kind of reminds me of Space Vangers, Vangers in a way. Uh, cer- certainly in terms of, uh, not, not in terms of like animation, but in terms of just general gameplay and whatnot. Uh, but one, the one thing that really sticks out is you drop, get dropped on a level and the background image is the same, no matter where you go. <laughs> that, that, that's just wonderful. You, you, there's parallax backgrounds. What's that? Oh man. It's, mm, it's never not, heard of them. It's not I, uh... that great, but it is cheap as free. So you should check that out if you have some spare time and you want to go pew pew. It, it's it, you know, actually, that that's what it is. It plays like asteroids with a bunch of extra content. Hmm. I've actually never heard of this game before tonight, so I might have to give it a go. Okay, developers, millennials that want to make retro shit. We talked about this billions of years ago in the future. This one past. I've heard of. Mm-hmm. But a free Jack in chat realm went ahead and he's like, oh, I discovered this. And I'm like, why don't you watch our show? Uh, <clears throat> he's here. He's there. This is retro gaming done right, man. I mean, this is just brilliant. It looks brilliant. Of course, it's moving at two frames a second. I'm like, there we go. And it's like, what, X-Wing? The original X-Wing on DOS? Kind of. Yeah. It's, it's weird because X-wing, it's like high-quality graphics. Commander, yeah. I mean, they're pixelated, high-quality graphics. It look yeah. It, 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 they put a filter over. Like, they they rendered it in three D, and they put a filter over. The, it. That's the what aesthetics it looks like. of it is just mind-jarringly beautiful. Uh, P man, you remember playing this? Yeah, I actually loved playing the demo that they had out, which is still the demo that they have up on their website. I sent the developers an email about a month ago because I the game popped into my head, and I'm like, oh, maybe there's an update. Maybe I can get an updated Linux version. They're like. Oh, yeah, we have some things planned for Linux, but we haven't really had the time because life kind of got in the way. But we'll let yeah, you know the, soon enough. The, the the Linux demo is as of, like, August of last year. Yeah. And it, 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 it is very much an alpha. It's, it's, it. it's very <laughs> crashy. It says it has controller support, but it's a bit wonky. Yeah. Uh, but re- really, really, the big thing is like seeing the 3D graphics all pixelated and dossy does not process right in my brain. So it gives me a bit of a headache. That's because you weren't born when that was going. Well, you might have been. You were like yeah, two. I, 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 I was like four at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is. The aesthetic is actually very well done. They do the, like Ven said, they render everything in 3D and then just run like a pixel filter on top of it. But it looks great, and it works amazingly. Whenever the demo is not crashing, it actually works 
real, really great. And I'd very much like to see this. Yeah, what we're saying is get over there, go to the site and bug the piss out of them. Say, get on this, yeah. develop this, get this on Greenlight. This is something I want. Developers, on developers, developers. Throws chair. Hashtag Bulmer. Oh, speaking of chairs. Coming, coming up next, we throw chairs at Outland. And we get to see what happens when you mess with the light and the dark. That's racist, Jordan. Shame on you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the chair quisition. This week, the game on the chopping block is Outland by House Mark Studios and published by Ubisoft. It's on a custom engine. You can pick it up for 999 wet stinky euros or space bucks. And it is a fast paced dynamic platformer where the player uses the powers of light and dark in an epic journey to save the world from the forces of chaos. Basically, it's like Metroid with Ikagura, if you remember that PlayStation 2 game, if you had Ikaruga. a PlayStation 2. So, let's not hesitate any more and run it through the ringer. Bring up the chairs. One chair means that it's shit. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. We also have our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, Ven, let's kick this off. Did the game make with the working? How does it run over here on the Ubuntu 1404 LTS 980 powered 4K displayed box of business? You might wonder. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everything ran out of the box except for VSync. And when I say it didn't work, it worked. I just could not uncheck it. There was no way to get it disabled. It always was floored at 60. Furbs, and I felt myself screaming at the top of my lung organs. Why am I being forced to play this nice looking game in 4K at a constant 60 furps with minimal tearing? Oh, the huge manatees! Really, that was nothing to ding at a chair about, so I'm going to give this the four chairs it deserves. It's looking good so far, J Man. Yeah, so far. I don't know. Downloaded this game uh, today, actually. And uh, when installed it, started it up, nothing. Checked uh, PS, process was there, nothing. So I said, hmm, maybe I'm missing a library or something. Go to command line, go to the folder, set LD library path to the current directory lib, run it, no output. And so I said, hmm, this is going to be hard to review the game. So I went and checked it out on the, uh, well, so that box I was referring to was the 1090T or NVIDIA 670 Superclocked Fedora 21 64-bit box. I hauled on over to the other room that has the Fedora 20 64-bit box with the A10 5800K APU on the open source drivers, spun that up, and it worked fine. So I gave that a shot there. Uh, so I, I was almost convinced that this game was completely busted on my Fedora 21 box until I figured I accidentally... I actually installed some dependencies for nave i think it no no it was yeah nave from uh from the news segment reboarded this machine just to try it one more time before we started recording lo and behold it started up so i gotta ding it a chair for that because it eventually did work but you need to tell me why your game is busted so i can fix it and play it three chairs yeah it is a platformer bullet hell type thing, and it claimed on the Steam store page that it had full controller support. So I sat on my couch, played it on SteamOS on the Steam box, the unofficial Steam machine that has an AMD Athlon X4 860K and an NVIDIA 750 Ti, and it ran. No problems, no issues. The controller was recognized, so... I can't really think of a chair. Four. Four chairs. All right, so that's three chairs from Mix with the Working. Up next is Shinny and Signs. Then, how did it sign? It's signed. I, I was not thrilled about playing another platform game because you see ladies and goyles and guys and everyone else, zombie demon hordes of the internet. I was There's trying to get us to hookers. play... Transsexual lesbian chainsaw hookers from Mars, if you want to be correct, son. <laughs> I really wanted to do an early access review of Besiege, but I was outruled, so okay. But the first thing out of my noise tube, my mouth organ, while playing this was, well, at least it's pretty. 
Uh, the Fox mocap of your character is done quite well. It really gives you a sense of motion and movement throughout when you do it, because it is a platformer slash bullet hell. And oh, look, directional sound in a 2D platformer. That's, um, neat, question mark, I guess. It's a thing. Uh, that said nothing about the sounds, or immersive, whatsoever. Not even in the slightest. They're just there to provide some oral entertainment to let you know that you've thwacked things. And it's not jarring, but considering the visual eye candy being thrown into your eye meats, yeah, maybe some auditory stuff would go along with that. Narration's all right. I didn't hate that guy. So I'm going to give it three chairs. I, I think visually overpowers the fact that the audio is there, but you're still wondering why, Brad. Yeah, it's certainly pretty. Uh, they have the whole like dark neutral motif with the red, blue, and the yellow, and it works for the most part because you're using the whole primary color thing. Uh, the music is a bit of all right too. Uh, it, it's it's sort of it meshes very well with the the visual motif of sort of that ancient ruiny Aztec feel. I, I don't really know how to describe it. And the narrator, he, he again, like uh, Ven said, he does a pretty good job of attempting to give the story some gravita. But again, you can only go so far with the the material you're given. Real, real, yeah, like Ven said, the the real standout here is the visual aesthetic because it's very, very well done. It 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 captures what it's the game was going for, and I think it really did a good job. So three chairs for that. Yeah, so here's the thing. The game starts with a black and yellow character traveling through That's a racist. yellow and black black drop. So I kind of lost sight of what I was doing more than once. Uh, after you've progressed far enough, that's no longer an issue because you have the same black and yellow character going around different colored backdrops. And that's fine. You can actually see your character. Uh, are you point. saying your character's blazing? Black Let's news. go with that. Blasian. <laughs> but then you hit a level with a black and blue backdrop at the exact same point that you get the powers of light, which means that the yellow neon things on your character's armor all of a sudden become blue. So a problem that sort of kind of fixed itself is now a problem again. And I did very much like the the uh, the narration and the combat animations were well done the whole freeze frame things when you smack a creature with the sword actually makes you feel like you're accomplishing something instead of just waving a feather duster around still losing sight of your character in a 2d platformer bullet hell type thing is not a good thing so i have to do it two chairs all right, so that's two chairs for Shinny and Signs. Control is next, Ven. Did you feel like you're in control? Hallowed are the chairs and hallowed are the X Clone controller. Because this business just worked out of the box. The buttons, they were all matched properly, and it does rumble like fuck all, but only when you get to the end of a certain level, or any level actually, and you're like, oh, here's the light thing, get ready. Then you lay the controller on your desk organ and kind of race it or whatever you want to do. <coughs> that said about the controls, they're tight. Uh, I was a bit worried about using the swivelly d paddy thingy for movement, but again, no issues on that. Um, buttons worked, one mashed. So, I'm going to give that four chairs. Yeah, the the uh, controls work fine on the Xbox 360 controller. That that is not an issue. It, it is your standard Metroidvania affair where you have your attack, your jump, your dash, all that good stuff to get you over the various obstacles. Uh, I am gonna ding it a chair though, just because you slide when you land, which makes sense in terms of real world physics. But when you are playing a bullet hell platformer, it is super easy to overshoot your target. Because you're because you have to then keep into account the fact that your guy is going to slide about an inch after he lands, and that's no good. So I'll not enough to make give it a two chair. So I'll give it three. Must have been one angry inch. <laughs> well, it Six does inch claim forward full and three controller. inches back. I got an angry inch. It does claim full controller support, and it did not disappoint. The PS2 DualShock 
that's connected to the Steam machine work fine. And I didn't actually try the NVIDIA controller, mostly because I doubt NVIDIA has fixed the firmware to the point where it's consider, considered workable under Linux. So I just tried it with that. It worked. It rumbled. Good on them. But I have to ding it a chair because it doesn't allow you to rebind the buttons on the controller. It has two schemes you can alternate between. There's a regular one and the alternate one. And neither of those was particularly good. It was Neither of them were anything I could call good, at least for my hand. So I'm going to have to give it three chairs. All right, so that's three chairs for controls. And finally, our subjective category, fun. Ben, did you enjoy yourself? Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> again, I give you Dusta Melee, the game. Now, here's the thing, Brian. I'm 54 minute organs in, and nothing has genuinely happened at all. I'm still playing a platformer game, and it still is like, well, we're going to teach you this new thing. And I'm like, that's a bit long. And the groan of pain. Right when I started, you should have heard it. It was amazeballs when I noticed there were things that you could slide through or crawl under, but I didn't have the ability to do such. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, kids, what this is this is a time-honored tradition of extending your game's playtime without really adding anything. Backtracking. Always fun. Oh, Castlevania. No, it's not. But at the end of the day, take that shot. It's a competent Metroid platformer thingy of things, and it reminded me of Dust and Guacamelee. But don't think for one second it borrows from them. No, this came first. Uh, especially uh, it hit me with the sliding and backtracking. I was thinking Dust. Then not too far when you first start, you get in and you get your light and dark, red and blue abilities, and it's like, ah, that's Guacamelee. Then I went and looked up and I'm not saying it started with this game, but this was first. So if you're a fan of backtracking, pick it up. I mean, it's nine nine nine. It's not overpriced by any means for what it is. And if 54 minutes in and you haven't seen a boss and you're not really doing anything appeals to you, go for it. If not, wait for a sale, then pick it up. I'm not going to tell you not to pick it up, because it can definitely be fun if you're into the whole Metroidvania-type platform business. But for me, I'm going to keep playing it until I get to, because everyone's like, oh, you got to wait for the epic boss fights. And I was like, there's bosses in this? What? When is that at the two-on mark? I don't know. What year is this? Two chairs. Kind of a middle-of-the-road score, not bad, not really good. Che, baby. Yeah, like like Ben said, it, it is certainly a competent Metroidvania game, but it really is nothing special. There are much better examples of the genre out on the next right now, i.e. Dust and uh, Guacamele. But, yeah, just going through the map, you can you, very early on you can see all the points where you basically have to go and backtrack. And once you get the slide, you start seeing, oh, you need to have the teleport skill to use this. Oh, you need to have the red skill to use this. Oh, you need to have the blue skill to use this. And it's just good. You need and to I, have I friends to go, use this. Oh, oh, yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to go over all these levels again. Uh the game, really, one thing I've noticed is that the game really does take a page out of the Castlevania fuck you enemy placement game. <laughs> you really have to be patient and analyze every single pattern and every single variable of a jump. Because if you fuck up, you will very likely get shot down back to the very beginning. And it's super annoying to navigate through all these jumps again. It gets really, really frustrating after the fourth or fifth time. Um... The, the other thing I noticed is that you basically, you really have to commit to your jump. And when you're doing that in a bullet hell game, that, that, that's just kind of a recipe for disaster because again, you have to be sure a hundred percent certain that you're going to land that jump or else you're going to get killed to death by spiky bugs and blue dots or red dots. I don't really mind the Ikagura mechanic where you have to Ikaruga. switch between the two mo the what? Ikaruga. Ikaruga, whatever. Ikaruga mechanic. Imger. Where... Imger! Imger! Arch! 
No, um, where you have to switch colors to fight certain things. But I think it's a bit inconsistent because no matter what, the enemies will hurt you. Their attacks won't. And that that just kind of weirds me out because if, if you're blue, you should be able to bypass the blue guys. It, it sort of seems that the, the motif they were going for there is a bit inconsistent. Again, it's a competent game. It's not really special. I'm going to have to give it two chairs. I, I, I'm about an hour and change in. I haven't gotten to a boss fight. Apparently, I'm a little behind Pedro, so he can tell yeah, you more about I that. Have, I have played the game for about an hour and a half, and I'll echo what, you, what both of you just said. It is a very competent Metroidvania platformer. It would be a proper platformer, weren't it for the fact that I keep losing track of where the hell my character is on screen because the character has the exact same color scheme as the backdrop. Not nice. Try it in 4K. But, yeah, I can't imagine that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Jordan was talking about the boss fights. The boss fights are boring and uninspired. It, it will take you 20 seconds to figure out the boss's pattern. But after you've done that, it's just grinding. It's just, oh, okay, he's done the, his attack. Just climb on his arm, smack the head. There you go. Apparently, there are some bosses that have higher complexity at a later point. I honestly couldn't deal with it anymore. I played for about an hour and a half. I just couldn't do it. I had made my opinion of this game at around 20 minutes in, and that extra hour and 10 minutes that I played did not change my opinion. And, well, I kind of have to stand by what I said with the Wooden Sensei review. I don't like Whoa. platformers unless they do something different, something that sets them apart. And this game doesn't really do anything different for me. All the mechanics have been done much better and in much better games like Guacamelee and Dust and Elysian Tale, or even much worse games like the one we reviewed last week, Isbra. Yeah, with, bra, with all the bullet bra, hell. Bra. Yeah, all the bullet hell thingies. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I I can only give this two chairs because I can recognize it's worth, but I, it's not for me. I can't. <laughs> all right, so that's two chairs across the board for fun, and if we tally everything up, we get two whole chairs for Outlands, gentlemen. Final thoughts. I don't know what this game is trying to be exactly. Yeah, I want to be a platformer, but there's definitely a strong element of bullet hell in this. Yeah. But it makes you patient. That's There's little things like that that I'm almost tempted to throw an asteroid, an asteroid, or whatever her name was from Fringe on it. Because you have to think. You can't just rush into this. There's several times where you're just faced with something with all the pews and the pews and the pews. And you're like, okay, we're going to time this and time... Oh, no, I'm killed to death. Then you got to come back and you're going to try that again. And again, until you eventually get through it. But on that same thought organ, I never felt a sense of accomplishment. It wasn't, yes, I beat it. I was like, I finally made it. I'm fucking bullshit. All right, what's next? So, I stand by what I say. I mean, if you like something like this, pick it up half off. You won't regret it, J-Man. Yeah. What, what, you, you bring up a good point about not really accomplishing anything. Because when you, when you get through a particular challenge, you're like, okay, now where's the fucking uh, checkpoint so I don't have to do this shit again where's if I get killed cord? to death? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the, those, some of those checkpoints are pretty few and far between, especially in some of the more complicated uh, platforming bullet hell segments. And it's just like, you die and you're like, oh shit, I gotta do this again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. It is and a it goddamn pain in the ass. So, <laughs> really, if you like platformers, you like Metroidvania type games, eh, get Guacamelee, get Dust and Legion Tale. If you like bullet hell platformers, on the other hand, yeah, I get this one, because Isbara is not quite there. This one's actually a better alternative. Uh, but I don't know. I guess it takes a special kind of someone to like a 2D platformer Metroidvania with bullet hell elements. I I'm just not that kind of person, but maybe you are. I sure as All right, not. then. Coming up next, your hate mail. Ah, boy, 
boys and girls it's that time of the week again it is the hate mail and we actually did get some sort of hate mail this week for a change but yeah if you'd like to get in touch with us speak ill of our mothers go on over to linuxgamecast.com push the contact button on the nav bar uh, there was a sexy lady on screen just now yeah that was much better looking <laughs> then this form you have to fill out if you want to get in touch with us. And if you'd like to, say, promote your game or some matter of crowdfunding campaign, make sure you pay attention to the attention big bold letters that Ven has on that page. We need keys, prototypes, demos, whatever. If you want to send us keys for us to play your game, send us Three, maybe four keys. Well, working to maybe you, you just can't be like, hey, Brad, we got, we got a green light project. Um, well, uh, maybe no, we no. get some promotion. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we can't just be doing that. Otherwise, that'd be the entire fucking show because every week I get like four or five of those freaking emails. Then how many do you get? <laughs> you don't want to know, Brad. You don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have mine set to auto-reply pictures of various celebrities junk, so that's why I don't get them anymore. <laughs> But yeah, we did get some manner of hate mail, so let's get on with that. The first one, eh, not so it's much. From, it was actually from it, Pablo. From my newest Pedro. Pedro. It's from Pedro, Pablo. <laughs> he writes, hi, I get that you call filthy heretics. Wait, hang on, English. I get that you call, fil- oh, fuck it, whatever, brain. <laughs> to dual booters. But where do you stand on using wine to play Windows games? Do people using it belong to the same circle of hell? By the way, since you always joke about throwing you some shackles via Patreon, I literally did that just now. I live in this. Uh, you guys do amazing work with the podcast supporting. Letting, all right. First of all, a you could not have cut me more deeply <laughs> by saying that. I mean, ow, ouch. And I'm I'm talking about the kindness. This is. Just feel dirty. No, what, what, what were you saying over G-Talk the other day? It was like war crimes forgiven. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, actually, you know, I assume everyone in Israel knows each other. You might know um, another one of our friends in Israel, uh, Dor. Dor. He's over there. Yeah. He's invited us to come over. But, you know, again, thanks for backing up. Where do we stand on wine? I'm, I'm going to give my voice organ to this. Here's how the chairs engage this. It's not us. It's just the knowledge that we've tried to decrypt from their massive moon technology. Wine's awesome. All right, personally, you wine is great. Fantastic project, and I, I think it's a wonderful thing. But where it gets sticky is, so you move over to the Linuxes, and you become pure, and you can say hello to all the chairs with a straight face. You're good. All your previous purchases and all that, you can run into the wine. There's no penalty to that. Where it does change, Brad, is if you purchase Windows games like um, South Park, Stick of Truth. That well, counts as one of your five heretic purchases. Me personally, I have two. I have Trackmania Nations United Forever and Skyrim because I have not redeemed my South Park Stick of Truth because Jordan was trying to get me to clock in at three. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we question the chairs, and if it's a gift, it doesn't count because you didn't actually buy it. Hmm. Sticky <laughs> yeah, logic. that's up for debate. <laughs> the scripture is not very clear on that one, but personally, I uh, still. I, 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 I am a reform chairist, which is a joke that <laughs> the guy in this film would get. Born again. So. Westboro Baptist chairist. <laughs> but yeah, I still use wine to play some games, namely Fallout 2, Fallout 3, Skyrim, and Need for Speed World. And that's yeah, it. I, 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 th- I think it's unreasonable to state that if you already own the games that you can't play them in wine, they're your games. You pay exactly. for them. Exactly. That's stop. what I them. said. Yes. Yeah. As long as I, you don't I, go I, I around agree. buying Windows-only games with the intuit of running them under wine. That is a heretic purchase. That yeah. you only get five of. Pedro, I, 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 I need you to do something for me. Yes. Could you stop shitting on VP? Oh, oh yeah, s- not today. So someone, someone <laughs> apparently sent us like the entire body of war. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this summarize actually, this hey, business. YouTube, Pedro, give us the highlights. Yeah, this was a YouTube comment because you may remember last week that I used 
virtual programming as a bad example when compared to, say, Techland. And Konstantinos Feretos, a Greek guy, actually went on YouTube and posted this entire ramble, which basically says, oh, you're saying that VP sucks? They've actually helped the kernel team find some bugs. And Techland is much worse than they are because reasons. And I actually replied to him right then and there. Uh, there there's the entire thread. Just go on over to YouTube on our latest episode, uh, 134. Look it sit up. Sit through the entire thing and then read uh, the comments. You can sit through the entire thing. Just, you know, watch the ads all the way through. Don't skip them, please. <laughs> but, yeah, you can see the entire damn thing and it's... It, it's pointless. It's stupid to actually argue with someone who cannot see what virtual programming will do, like we've already discussed earlier in well, the show. Well, I mean, it's not like Valve and um, EA and everybody's doubling down on a Vulcan or anything. Nah, that's mm. lies, I tell you, lies. Mm -hmm. Well, you, Jordan, you apparently had something to say. Did I? I oh, yeah, so, right. <laughs> uh, Squirrel! Drugs, ladies and gentlemen. No, uh, I mean, after the events of this week, I'm, I'm going to keep shitting on virtual programming because it is not a very good solution to use. In a perfect world, stuff like Wine from our last uh, hate mail and virtual programming shouldn't have to exist. They, But right now, they should be considered a Band-Aid measure at the very best and not anything resembling a permanent solution like they're doing for Bioshock or The Witcher. I think it's a bad thing that we are using wrap ports because no one actually gets experience developing on Linux. They get experience hacking DirectX to work on Linux. That's not the same thing. Yeah. My biggest issue with the virtual programming is uh, maybe they did a kernel patch, but they did that to make their software, which is proprietary and it's closed, to make it work. What have they contributed as far as their technology? Hmm. Zilch. Not a whole lot. And then I still remember them as the guys in the forums during the witching. Uh, we call it the witching, the Witcher 2 port. So, don't you mean the witching? No, just the witching, because it was witching. Uh, Which will like, What was it? GLSL? And like, everyone's yeah, like, yeah. well, why don't you use that? Because, you know, wine runs it infinitely better than like, oh, it does. We've magically created our own implementation of that. And I, heart of hearts, don't believe that their code would stand up against a clean room audit. Just yeah, saying, allegedly, wouldn't. just saying, not accusing, just my thought organs on that. But somebody was kind of nice to us, P-Man. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, last um, week, uh, about... Uh, uh, it was about two hours after Ven posted the the episode. I get an email from the developers of Isbra, Mr. Bishop Isbra? Henry, and he says, <laughs> "Isbra, uh, he says, dear ah! Linux Gamecast, first of all, I would like to thank you for the time to test and review our oh, game. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that you didn't enjoy our game. I really hope that this won't put you off of any of our future games. Kind regards, Bishop." Ladies and gentlemen, here you go. People on the internet, especially on the Linux underscore gaming subreddit, like to call us assholes. And this guy right here, Mr. Hennon, just wrote the book on how to quote-unquote disarm these assholes after they shed all over your game. No, 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 listen, I don't remember how this ends, but your mother's a whore, all right? <laughs> your mother's a whore, Trebek. Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> That's and on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, except for next week, because it's going to be around 5.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. We're doing that for an early show because Patreon backers, a lot of our audiences in the UK, and they want to watch us a bit early. That'll be around 10, 10 p.m. In space ten ish, yes. In space UK. GMT. All right, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be fantastic sauce. I'm Vin Stone, cleverly disguised at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets plus Vin Stone. If you ever want to scream in my face, Oregon, J Baby. I'm Sean Connery. You can find me at the Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Quang on the Google Plus. I am not Sean Connery. I am Pedro Mateus. You can find me on the Twitters at Unaccounted For or on the Google Pluses. 
at Plus Pedro Mateos. We just want to thank Shant Realm being in there, being polite, and not saying anything about the worst Sean Connery impression they've ever fucking heard. Yeah, no, it has, it has nothing to do with the fact of the Twitch delay. Not at all. Hmm. Nope. Not? No. Nope. I'm, I'm, st- I'm still going to stab you in the larynx when you're sleeping, though. Just, just to put a stop to that. I have an erection already. Good, I'm going to stab you in that, too. <laughs> I'll stab you in your erection. 